Are you new to plant identification but aren't sure where exactly to begin? Well, I am Lily Anderson Messick with the Florida Native Plant Society and join me today on this virtual field trip in Leon County to learn where to begin when you're ready to begin identifying plants. So we found a cool plant, but where do we go next? How do we start, begin to start identifying it? Well, if you're a beginner completely to plant identification, a great, great place to start is uh, field guides. And so these are usually books that are mostly photograph based and these two versions from Gil Nelson for the Florida Panhandle and Roger Hammer for the entire state of Florida are color coded. So you can go to this flower is slightly pinkish red. So we would go to the pinkish red blooms and you can flip through and try to find the matching plant. So right here we see um, this matches pretty well and that is clasping milkweed. This is going to be the common name, um, clasping milkweed. And then underneath it, you'll see the genus and species, which is the Latin binomial, uh, Asclepius amplexicollis. So common names are useful when you're just beginning to learn plants. But just like nicknames uh, for humans, different people might have different nicknames for you. And the same thing is true with plants. So some people, in one area might call this clasping milkweed. Some people in another area might call it red milkweed or something else. And so in order to know that we're both talking about the same plant, it's important to use and learn the Latin binomial, Asclepius amplexicollis. So the genus is Asclepius and amplexicollis is the species. Just like I am a human named Lily, that's my common name, but my scientific Latin binomial is Homo, the genus Homo, and the species Sapiens, were Homo sapiens. And so it's also important to learn the family. This is in the dogbane family, Apocynaceae. So all milkweeds are in the dogbane family. So this is a great place to start when you're just beginning to learn plants. And learning the common names is good, but please be very aware of and pay attention to and begin learning the Latin binomial, Asclepius amplexicollis, because that's very key if you want to begin to learn more about plants. Okay, so once you begin to learn more about plants and you want to advance the next step, I recommend learning the family. So as we mentioned before, this is in the dogbane family, also known as the milkweed family, Apocynaceae. And this is an excellent book to begin to learn families. Botany in a Day, The Patterns Method of Plant Identification by Thomas J. Elpel, An Herbal Field Guide to Plant Families of North America. And so it's just a very easily readable and um, kind of brief synopsis of plant evolution. And then it goes into all the specific plant families and the patterns that are found within those plant families. So you could go to another state entirely, it might find a plant there and you might say, okay, well, I, I don't know what species this is and I might not even know what genus it's in, but I know that this is in the milkweed family, Apocynaceae, because I know the patterns of the milkweed family now. And then you can find a flora or a wildflower guide up there and kind of weed your way out from there. Okay, so we found another plant, but let's say you go through the field guide and you can't find one that quite matches this one. So you might know maybe what family or what genus it's in, but it's definitely not a species that's common enough to be in the common field guides. So this is where um, a phone can be very useful. First off, what I would recommend is taking photos and take a lot of photos of different characters of the plant like whether there are leaves down at the base, those would be called basal leaves. The tops of the leaves, the undersides of the leaves, you wanna get if there's any seed pods on here, the front of the bloom, the back of the bloom, the side of the bloom, a general landscape photo of it to get the habitat. And that way you can identify it for sure when you get home, if you have field guides at home or, or a key at, dichotomous key at home. But a great in the field app to use is iNaturalist. So iNaturalist is also a website and it's kind of a social media for naturalists. You can upload plants and animals 
and it gives you suggestions based on a photo algorithm uh, as to what you might have seen. But it also has people like me, nerds, who are spending time on there and identifying or correcting identifications of species that have been uploaded to iNaturalist. So this is my iNaturalist page and this is the app on the phone. Okay, so here is my iNaturalist page. And when I'm out in the field, I can click observe. And if I'm at home, I can use the photo library, which I've already have photos of different parts of the plant. But here I can just use the camera. And then I try to take a pretty good photo or multiple photos of the plant. And then you click use photo. And right here it says, what did you see? And you click that and that triggers the algorithm to give you a suggestion about what you might have seen. And so it definitely knows what family it's in. And so we know it's in the mint family, Lamiaceae. And the first three suggestions are Scutellaria in the genus Scutellaria. So it's very likely that this is Scutellaria, although none of these are the correct species. And I know that because I know what species I'm looking at. So I, if I know, I can type in the species up here and choose it when it comes up. Or if you don't know, you can pick the top one or pick the family. And um, you can click on the little eye to see more information about that species. And you can definitely see just based on the leaves that that is not the same species. So you go back here and you can pick one of those. Either way, um, somebody like me will probably correct the identification if it's wrong. And if you just pick the family, then someone might identify for you what it is. But um, I'll just pick family. And then one thing I would mention is I always recommend people obscure their observations, the location of the observation. And that's because poaching is an issue with a lot of rare plants. And even if it's not a rare plant, it might be in a sensitive habitat that is near rare plants. And so I'm always preferred to be on the careful side and I obscure my observations. And then you click share and it uploads to your iNaturalist page. And then hopefully someone will identify it for you if you haven't been able to yet. But at least it got you to the family and probably the genus. And that way you can go to the next website and try to figure out what it is from there. Okay, so the next website that is super useful for plant identification is the Florida Plant Atlas. So you can just Google Florida Plant Atlas and this website will come up. It's put, it's, um, put together by the Institute for Systemic Botany and they manage it and update it. And up here at the top, it has a search bar and it says scientific name, although you could put in the common name or the family or genus if you wanted to. And because we have narrowed it down to Scutellaria, I can put in SC, where's the U, U. Oh, and there's Scutellaria. My phone knows me so well. And then this pulls up every Scutellaria species that is native to Florida. And it has them listed over here on the left. And in the corner here up top, you'll see check all. And I'll, you can click that button, check all. And then you click compare records. And then it pulls up the photos of all of those different species that are native to Florida. So you can go through and try to figure out which one it might be. So there, there's another species that looks similar to this one. Um, let's see, Arnacolia, right? Yeah, so this one looks really similar. But if you click on that one, you can see that it doesn't occur in Leon County. It has never been vouchered here. So it's very likely that this is probably not Arnacolia. It tells all the dark green um, highlighted counties are the ones that this plant, this species has been vouchered in. So we can go back and since I know which one it is, I'll just take us to that one. Um, but going through here is a great way to learn. But uh, so this is Scutellaria multiglandulosa. And I know that, but you could have figured that out just by going through all of these species, comparing the photos and then seeing where they are vouchered. So we know this species occurs in Leon County and um, if you wanted to Google the species, then you could find what habitat it occurs in and that would give you some more information. Okay. All 
right, so we found one more plant. Oh, and this is an interesting one. Oh, there's a little bee or a little um, a delta beetle that flew off. Oh, and we got a spider right here too. So say you found this plant and you've looked through here, you can go through to the white flowers. Let's see if we have one in here. Yeah, and so we see, oh, it looks really similar to all of these pawpaws in the Asimina genus and in the um, Anonaceae family. So, but they all look really similar, so you're not sure exactly which one it is. Well, you can go to that same website, the Florida Plant Atlas, and you can put in Asimina and find all the native Asimina in Florida. And then you, again, you can click check all, compare records, and they all look really similar. So it can be hard to identify just based on photos when you're comparing species. So another, when you're trying to move up in slightly more difficult plants to identify, you're going to have to use a dichotomous key eventually. So this is Cluel's Guide to Vascular Plants of the Florida Plan Handle, and this is an example of a dichotomous key. So a dichotomous key basically just asks a question one or two does it look like this or does it look like this and then it takes you to the next question from there depending on what you answer and that is how you weed down to species um, you can start at the very beginning and then move all the way in or you can go to the family if you're familiar with what family it's in and it takes a lot less time if you know so we know it's a pawpaw in the genus Asimina in the family Ananaceae. And once you start using a dichotomous key, this is when it is, it, it's critical to know the vocabulary of botany. But all of these um, books typically have a vocabulary and glossary in the front. So you can look up the words that it's describing. So it's asking us here, leaves membranous, obovate, to ob lanceolate, acute or acuminate. And then the other option is leaves coriaceous, linear to oval, never accumulate, flowers various, etc. So you have to compare and you have to know those terms in order to go to the next step in order to figure out which species it is. And it takes time to learn that vocabulary. But especially if you're interested and passionate about botany, it's worth learning. And it's really not that hard. You just use the glossary in the front of the book and you just have to keep going back and forth. And there are online versions that are, this is a little out of date, but there are up-to-date online flora of the Southeastern United States. The best one that I use every day is Weekly's Flora of the Southeastern United States. And it um, has, uh, it comes in a PDF form. It's available for free online and you can search within the PDF so you can find, you know, where, what page you want to go to out of the thousands of page in the pages in the PDF. Okay, well, thank you for joining me today on this virtual field trip to learn about plant ID. I hope you picked up some key tips that will help you in the field and give you some confidence to get going. It's just important to get started and to just start learning and learn a little bit every day. You don't have to know it all, all at once, but again, like I recommended, start out with some easy field guides that are color coded to familiarize yourself with some of the common showier plants in your area, and then move on to learning the plant families and the patterns of the plant families. So you can really get to know what uh, a milkweed looks like or what a pawpaw looks like or what a Laniaceae mint family plant looks like. And then eventually you will move on to dichotomous keys. And again, this is an outdated version but it's nice to get to know how a dichotomous key works in the hand. And there are more updated dichotomous keys on, available online. I definitely recommend Weekly's Flora of the Southeastern United States. And there's an updated 2022 version that is for free online in PDF form. You can download that to your phone and you can use that even out in the field. And I use that every day. And um, yeah, go out there and start identifying plants. <laughs>